Hi there, my name is Tim Mitchell and I'm just going to use this short video as an introduction to the clinical translation framework that you'll probably be coming across as part of your studies at Curtin University. So through the Australian Physiotherapy Association a career pathway has been developed and in that pathway there's different stages. You might be starting your initial training as a physiotherapist and then once you qualify you're at the graduate level and as you develop as working as a physiotherapist there's the opportunity to do advanced training and some of those are university programs where you become a titled physiotherapist and at Curtin University there's programs offered for this titling process in musculoskeletal physiotherapy sports and exercise physiotherapy and also men's and women's pelvic health physiotherapy there are also other titling options as well. As you progress further in your career and become potentially particularly advanced, there's opportunity to engage in another training process which is considered at the expert level of physiotherapy where you can become a specialist musculoskeletal or other type of physiotherapist across a whole range of different um, subcategories or specialties of the profession. Wherever you are in your career pathway, the Australian Physiotherapy Association has developed a, a competence framework and within that there's seven roles with the practitioner at the middle but then a range of other roles that you'll evolve and develop at each stage of your career and through the current university program you're involved in all of those roles will be developed as you progress along through your course. The obvious ones, you'll develop specific knowledge and skills, so that might be in anatomy, for example, as an, as a, an obvious one. There might be specific handling skills with patients, quite technical skills that you might be doing around the neck, for example, or that might be broader skills in terms of, of patient transfers and, and mobilisation or getting them out of bed, for example. Then there's other skills such as the really important communication skills that you'll evolve and develop over your career. And then in order to be effective with patients, particularly those that present with pain, is having an understanding of pain. Now there was an old view of pain that was pretty black and white around. There was a stimulus and that would go up to your brain to tell you there's a painful problem. Now our knowledge around pain has evolved, understanding that that's a much more complex and multifactorial uh, process that, that occurs at, at different levels of the body and in the spinal cord and in the brain. So really that understanding of pain is complex and it evolves and you'll continue to develop that over your, your training and your career. What we do know, and this isn't new as you can see from the date of that quote, that our understanding of more complex pain problems, be those musculoskeletal pain or there's other types of pain such as cancer pain or you'll have other pains, for example, following a stroke, there might be thalamic pain that can occur as a result of that. So there's a number of examples. But when we talk about persistent pain, there's a lot of concepts that we didn't understand, but the knowledge has certainly evolved. And you'll probably come across these two models, one of illness and one around pain that were developed in the 19 or the late 1900s and the basis of this is the biopsychosocial model which you're hopefully familiar with or you will become familiar with shortly so that is a base concept is the underpinning of our model of pain if you like but more recent research has identified how complex that really is so when we're dealing with people with any type of pain there's a whole range of considerations that might come into play and these considerations vary with the individual person in front of us which what which is what makes our role interesting on top of all those skills and understanding you learn you'll also evolve a model of clinical reasoning mm -hmm. so helping you put all that together with the person in front of you and maybe significant other family members to help understand their problem and develop with them strategies or options to help them recover because this is complex and in our experience of, of teaching people to become more skilled physiotherapists, 
we've evolved this clinical translation framework which helps people shift that knowledge and skills and understanding of what we should be doing into real world clinical practice. So we've called this the musculoskeletal clinical translation framework and most of the work originally done around this was around musculoskeletal pain but the model translates well to any aspect of pain and across any age group as well that you might be dealing with. So the authors have all been staff at Curtin University and they're involved in both teaching and research around different aspects of pain and also broader health in general. So really the frameworks concepts are quite simple that when we see someone with a pain problem there's a range of different components we need to consider to get the full picture if you like of what's going on or what's wrong with that person. And at the top of that is their individual perspective, so the person's perspective of what their problem is and how that's impacting them and also what they think they need. We need to have skills in either determining a diagnosis or at least at a minimum understanding what the diagnosis they've been given means, working out at what stage of the disorder they're at, so if it's an acute early stage or is it, is it a more persistent or long-term problem, understanding different features around their pain, considering the psychological and social factors, the implications of their pain presentation on their work, be that work for money or work in a volunteer or home situation, lifestyle factors that can affect that, considerations of the whole person such as their general health, how they're functioning and moving because of or around their pain, and then putting that all together with a clinical decision-making process. So the framework has been developed to have this single page that represents the different components or factors that might be contributing to the person's presentation, which we then put together as part of a clinical decision-making process to give them clarity and ourselves around their diagnosis, the stage of their problem, and what the main factors are contributing. So that might look something like this, for example, where anything we mark more to the right of the scale that's more highly contributing, that means they're the areas that we might need to pay attention to for that patient. And the beauty is what we need to do for one person with a very similar condition as someone else might be quite different. So that gives us that ability to understand the overall condition and then also tailoring our process of working out what's wrong and our management to the individual problem in front of us. So we've been working with this for a number of years and it's had really good traction um, both with students going through our programs at Curtin University and also nationally and internationally as well. So we hope you find it helpful also. If you have particular interest there's a website link there that you might care to look at which has some other videos and also podcast information to assist your learning in this area. Hope that's helpful and all the best for your physiotherapy studies and career. Thanks.